Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video, we're going to be implementing the Pern at Voice Chat system. I can't believe I'm saying that. Right now, we're just calling it Per Voice, and this will be an early release as of right now. And of course, I'll make a new video with the full version and everything when we get to it. So I'll also, of course, be letting you know some of the things that will be changing. But for now, let me just show you how to implement it and how to work with it. So first things first, it's really as easy. So let me just stop my runtime here. And we just have this little simple project because I just wanted to show you that it works in 3D as well. Um, but of course, it works in 2D just as well. It Right now, it uses Unity's audio system. And I'll talk a bit about more about that and the expandability of that and how you can work with other systems a bit later. All right. So first of all, let me just import it into the project there. So I'm just going to import per voice, the whole thing. I'm going to hit import. I'm going to let it pull. Okay, cool. So now that we have the Pervoice folder, let's just go ahead and set everything up as needed. So first of all, I'm on the newest right now dev version of Pernet because we actually need to use the new network assets tool. So right now I'm just going to hit new on this network assets and we're going to create the network assets. And here we're going to refresh the type list and I'm just going to have it search for through the whole assets folder. And I'm going to have it search for filters. This is just a basic setup. So I'm just going to search for filter. And here you can see we can search for the per audio filter. This is sort of the whole class that also encapsulates any other filter in Pernet, also filters that you make yourself. As you can see right now, we just have a low pass filter and noise filter that I've been using to test with. Um, but we'll, of course, have many more filters in the future. But right now, for example, I could hit generate and you can see two filters will already have been added, which are the filters that already came with Pervoice. This might be different in the future. Right now, if you go into Pervoice and filters, you see there's some filters already made, but these are scriptables. So fear not, um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. First of all, let me go to my player. And on the player, all you have to do is you have to add the Pervoice player. So I add the Pervoice player onto this and you also need an audio source wherever you want the audio to come from, right? So I'll, of course, have it come from the actual player. Um, and we just drag and drop the audio source into the per voice player, right? And cool. So here's also the filters, everything like that. And we can, and they are dynamically uh, scalable and stuff, but this is essentially it. Like now your voice chat works, right? So I'm gonna, just going to hit save. I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to go into game and start up the game. And I'm going to uh, make sure that we have voice on here or audio, sorry. And, and, and here you go. And here you go. Yeah, and here you go. Now it just worked, right? So as I unmute this, mute this. There you go. There you now go. I can hear now myself. I can hear myself. I'm going to mute that again. And already we just have functioning voice chat in the game. It's really that easy. And as you can see, we have a visualization here because I've clicked on the other player. We can see the visualization of how it's replaying his audio. Um, if we had local audio playback here, so let me just stop playing. I'm going to go on my own player. I can enable the local playback here. I'm just going to move the script to the top just to make it easier for myself in the future. Ooh, up there. And uh, now that I've enabled the local playback, if I go and hit play again, again, I'll be now able I'll be able to hear myself. You can also, you can see, also the see the audio of myself. Of myself. I'm going to mute it. You can see the audio playback of myself as well and how that looks. And actually, there's a there's a big layer of debugging to this as well. So let me just start this up again, and let me just keep the audio muted. We know that it works now. If you go to Tools, Per Net Analysis, there's actually an audio debug visualizer which allows you to visualize both sides of it. So I can visualize from my own side of it. Oh, of course, and debug visualization needs to be enabled. Let's just quickly go and do that. All you need to do is you need to add the component is called per voice player debug, this one. You just add that and that's essentially it. You don't really have to do anything more. Now, when I go and I hit play, now that the player has it on, I click here and here you can actually see a bunch of the layers that Pern is moving through or the per voice, sorry, is moving through. And actually, if you click on the other player, oops, here, you can actually see this is the receiving end of it. And you can see how it's a bit chubby because it's coming over the network as chunks. Um, but you essentially get the idea. And it's so, sort of moving through this journey, the audio. So here you can see we have the raw microphone input. Here's when I process the filters. And this is how it's sent to the network. And this is uh, because we are the server, we'll be able to see the server processed as well. So this is how the server processes it. Um, and then since we have the local playback as well, you can actually also see that here, the start and the end of, of the local playback. Uh, and if we go to the other player, this side of it, oh, sorry. Yeah, if we go to this other end of it, you can see here is when the server is processing it, the audio is received and the streamed audio starts and this is how it actually replays back to you. So it'll be very easy, hopefully, for you to also visualize exactly what's going on with your audio and easy to follow in its journey. And of course, this works on clients too. So, but now let's go and look into the filters a little bit after we just got that debugging out of the way. So let me stop playing back locally. I don't need that. And the filter setup is something I'm very happy with as well. I think this is very cool. Uh, so first of all, we can just start by setting up filters here. 
And the owner auto is because the audio filters are actually synchronizable. So these can be changed dynamically and we'll get into that in a little bit. But first of all, let me just try and add a filter. For example, let me add, a no let me add our noise filter. If you don't have a filter, you can easily just hit, go into your create menu, into Pernet, voice chat, filters, and here you'll see all the filters available to you. So you can see right now we have a noise filter and a low pass filter. Now I always have these, I already have these default ones set up here, so I'm just going to be utilizing them. Um, and going into the player here, you can see we now have the noise filter. There's a strength, which essentially likely should move between two and one, but it's up to the filter how that's handled. And then there's like a noise filter. So for example, we'd want this handled on a sender level, right? So if I just quickly uh, go and I remove this filter again, let's try and listen to the audio and how, how much background noise there actually is on it. And there you go. You could hear very clearly my fingers moving, me snapping and so on. Now let's go and add the noise filter, which at this moment of recording, at least, I will be doing more with it, but right now it's just a noise gate. So it essentially closes out noise and it has sort of tough fade in and fade out time or attack and release time. So now that we're doing this, this now means, uh, let me show you the layers. The filter level means that we're handling it on the sender, but you can also have it handled on the server or on the receiving end. Uh, the server is likely just if you want to be very safe about something, but mostly I imagine you should be doing it on sender or receiver. In this case, for example, like noise reduction and so on makes a lot of sense to do on the sender side, and I would always do it on the sender end. Um, but something like, for example, applying the low pass filter, which we'll get into in a little bit, I think should be handled on the receiving end. Like something like effects, for example, if you're on the other side of a wall, I want to muffle your audio. But the thing is, it needs to be locally for me, right? Because only I see you on the other side of that wall. Um, and the strength is not something that is synced. And that's by choice uh, because it's only going to be relevant to whoever's doing it, right? So in this case, this only the strength should be changed on the sender anyway. There's no point in, the in syncing this. Same thing if it's on the receiving and only the receiver is the one that will be changing the strength, right? So I hope that makes sense. So now let's go and test it with just this simple noise filter. I am snapping, I am my, snapping fingers. my fingers. I just disabled my local microphone from the recording. And yeah, as you could hear, already way less background noise. Um, and that clearly helps. Now let's also try and add the other filter on the receiving end, and that'll be the low pass filter. And let's also just keep that a strength of one, because we can also actually add runtime change the scriptable. Now I wouldn't do this through scripts. I don't think you should change scriptables through scripts. Um, I add runtime, but uh, just so we can sort of test the effect. So let me go in again and let me mute my local microphone here on the recording. So this is how it sounds. And this is how it sounds now with a low pass filter. I'm behind the wall. Help. And as you can see, that works very well as well. And it's very easy to apply filters. And now let's very quickly just look at synchronizing filters over the network because it should be very, very easy. So let's go back into our player. So here I am and we have our player. And if now, let me just have an existing script handle it. No, actually, let's make a new script just for cleanliness. It's easier to read. So I'm just going to call it my audio script and we're going to open that up. All right. And this is really going to be very easy. First of all, let me just make it a network identity as always or network behavior that's your call and then an update let me just do if it's not owner just return just so it's only the owner and then we can do something like if input dot get key down key code dot uh let me just do x again and then let's do apply filter so now let's set up a serialized field for the per voice filter per audio filter sorry and then let's just call it our test filter fiddler there we go and then let's make the apply filter method and then in here, all we need to do is now let's uh, reference, um, let's have a reference to our per audio player, per voice player. Man, I am confusing all these names. And that's our voice player. I promise you guys, I ju literally just finished making this part of it and I'm still forgetting. Uh, and all we have to do is voice player and then we can just do dot add filter and we can then add our test filter. We need to give it some level. Let's say that we want this on the receiving end and let's just say we want it to have an initial strength of one. Uh, this will be synced, the initial strength, that will be synced. So now all the re receivers will apply the filter at a strength of one, for example. And we could also have a private void remove filter. Same thing, we could do the voice player dot remove filter. And there's actually two ways of removing filter. Either you can manually try and get the index of the filter you want to remove, or you can actually just pass through the filter that it is that you want to remove. And that should work just fine as well. So let me duplicate this, and then on C, we remove the filter. So let's go and have a look at how this looks. I'm going to attach my audio script here. I'm going to feed it the low pass filter because that's the one I want to test. I'm going to feed it the per voice player. And that should essentially be it. So now let's remove the, per, the filter from here. And I will just mute it just for testing here. And now let's go on to our... Oh, actually, they're not owner auth, right? So right now they're actually server auth. So we have to do it on this guy. 
uh, but that's fine we can just keep track of both of them so let me bring the other clone over here as well and you can right now see if we go into his audio filters and expand them you can see he only has one which is noise filter now going into my main editor here if i hit x you can see now the low pass filter was added and if i go in here you can see now the low pass filter is added from here as well and if i go in here and i hit c now remove the low pass filter and that also works so the filters are actually very easy to dynamically add and sync as well if you wanted to um you of course don't have to um, generally I'd recommend have the filters on that you want and then manipulate the strength I think that's probably better but this filter syncing there's nothing wrong with it and it's not very heavy it's actually very lightweight and the filter syncing is actually the exact reason why we needed to set it up with the network assets because it's sending the filter over the network so it's important that your filters are in here so you could just easily auto generate make sure it search for per, per audio filter and then you don't really have to think about it anymore. It will just synchronize all your filters. Now, let me just quickly talk about what we want to do, right? Because right now it's obviously just putting out to an audio source. So if you want to work with Unity's audio, this is perfectly fine and already works for you. But people have already uh, thrown concerns out for what about WYS or FMOD or other audio handlers. We will make this a generic and open layer and we'll likely try and make the integration for you as well for many of these popular audio systems. Uh, but right now it just plugs into the audio source again this is an early access version of it and of course once the full version comes out i'll show the full power of it in a different video but i really just wanted to give a bit of a peek into what you can already do with the pernet voice chat and it's really that easy it's really just put on the per voice player give it an audio source and it works and the story it'll be the owner that'll be playing the audio and you don't have to control much more and actually and before people ask about spatial audio as well, since it's using the audio source, you can handle spatial audio exactly as you do in Unity, right? So I could just say the max distance is 10. Uh, I want a linear roll off, something like that. And now the further away or close we are, if I do something like this, um, we should essentially be able to hear the audio. So let's actually go and just test that real quick. So I'm gonna mute on my recording and unmute in here. There we go. Now you can hear as I go away, I get lower. Now I'm very far away. This is that guy over there talking. And now I go close. I'm far away. Help. Woo. Yeah, so as you can see, that works very well. And there we go. That just works. Of course, again, I'm, I'm a buffoon with audio. Remember to enable the, I'll set it to 3D if you actually want proper spatial audio. But either way, as you can see, it, it works. And it's. Uh, I think it's a very clean setup. I think it's one of the easiest voice chat setups that I've seen for Unity at least. And again, it already plays one-to-one -one with Pernet, which means it's really, you don't have to do anything and no shenanigans. Just drag and drop in. It works. End of story. Later on, we also wanted to actually run on other transport layers, so that way you can disconnect your audio. And in terms of bandwidth usage, because I know people are going to be questioning that as well, um, as soon as a couple of days ago, it was using 120 kilobytes a second. Today, it's using about 6 kilobytes a second. And we're going to be continuing to optimize it even further. Uh, I imagine we can probably get it to about half of that at least, which means it's very viable to run on your game network as well in smaller amounts. Um, so I'll say, you know, if you, for example, are just four or five players, whatever, I think it's completely acceptable having audio in the game or less of course and if of course you want let's say voice chat for 30 people or 20 people or whatever and your game is also running on the network like it's a network intensive game whatever i would probably disconnect it and have it on some other service which of course is something will help uh you set up as well in the future so overall i just i hope you like you like the looks of this i hope it seems interesting to you guys to use and i hope this is a, an exciting twist i don't I, I imagine not a lot of people expected us to come out with voice chat as well but here you go and you can very easily make your own filters as well. And I imagine AI could probably do a decent job at it too. The filter level is actually very easy, in my opinion, at least to handle. You just ha have to handle audio, obviously, on a byte level. But there's no networking going on. You just handle it as audio and that's it. So making filters should also be quite simple. Um, so yeah, best of luck. Have fun. I really hope you enjoy the tool. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.